There is oneness in the sacred place. It is here among the shifting sands of this inhospitable desert that three great faiths of the modern world converge. It is a land of pilgrimage and passion, tolerance and suspicion, hatred and love. Yet despite the differences found among the beliefs of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, there is but one supreme spirit, one belief in creation, and one life eternal. This is the complex legacy of modern Israel and the holy city of Jerusalem a chosen land, a vast mosaic of faith. Prophet Muhammad said of this land, Go to it and worship in it, for one act of worship there is like a thousand acts of worship elsewhere. Spirit and remember your baptism and be thankful. Praise God. Israel is a land where believers from around the world come to immerse themselves in the spirit and history of their faith. This holy land is a spiritual crossroads for the devout and the wellspring of all that is sacred to Christians, Muslims, and Jews. For Jews, Israel is the promised homeland. At this communal village in Galilee called the Kibbutz, Jews from Europe and America joined native Israelis who live close to the land where their faith was born. For Muslims, Israel's ancient city of Jerusalem contains sacred ground next to Mecca and Medina. Jerusalem is the holiest place on earth. For Christians, Israel is the cradle of faith. Pilgrims come here for a chance to touch the birthplace of their Messiah, Jesus Christ. In this holy land, symbols of faith can be found on shrines and monuments and in the hearts of those who believe. Prayer, ritual, and ceremony has special meaning. For here, great faiths born and nurtured in antiquity are very much alive today. Located in the heart of the Middle East on the eastern edge of the Mediterranean Sea, Israel is bordered by Syria to the north, Jordan to the east, and Egypt to the west. 
In the center of this arid land lies the holy city of Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. It's nestled in the Judean hills 35 miles from the Mediterranean Sea. Although a modern city, Jerusalem bears the signature of 4,000 years of faith. In Hebrew, it is called Yerushalayim, city of peace. In Arabic, Al-Quds, the holy. Home to more than half a million people, Jerusalem houses an often turbulent mixture of cultures and nationalities that bears the scars of centuries of conflict. <laughs> Along the busy streets and curbside markets, the daily business of living goes on. There's a constant flow of chaos and diversity. And even in the simplest of acts, religion dominates the lifestyles of the people who call this land their home. Orthodox Jews adhere to a strict system of rabbinic law called halakha. They dress in traditional clothing, uphold separate roles for men and women, and maintain their own schools. Behind these walls, the monks of the Monastery of the Cross are protected from the temptations of the outside world. They live their lives in seclusion and nurture their faith through worship and reflection. At the oldest surviving Islamic monument, Muslims perform their most essential act of devotion. In a tribute to their prophet Muhammad, they pray toward Mecca five times each day. The followers of these three great faiths are united in their belief in one God. Yet they're divided by their diverse history and faith in different prophets. Centuries of conflict and hostility surround many of the holiest shrines of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. These sacred sites sit side by side in a congested area of less than one square mile. Let there be light, declared Yahweh, God of the Israelites, as he created earth. And the light fell first, some say, on Jerusalem. What began 3,000 years ago as a walled city has been swallowed by the sprawl of modern Jerusalem. For believers, the heart of Jerusalem lies within a small area known as the Old City. There are eight gates to the old city. In ancient times, traffic passed on foot or camelback. Today, cars and trucks squeeze through these narrow passages. The entrance known as Mercy Gate or Golden Gate is permanently closed. No one knows why the gate was sealed, but many Jews believe their Messiah will open it on Judgment Day. Near the Damascus Gate, an exotic outdoor market winds its way into the old city. A heavy mixture of commerce and piety, east and west, past and future, characterizes the old city. This ground is sacred to most who enter, for devout Jews there's no place more holy. Nearly 4,000 years ago, on a rocky outcrop called Mount Moriah, 
Yahweh tested the faith of the Jewish patriarch Abraham by asking him to sacrifice his son. Abraham raised his knife in obedience, but at the last moment, Yahweh stayed his hand and spared the boy. A thousand years later, the Jewish king David built the first permanent altar on the same site. From the altar, he offered burnt sacrifices and prayers to his god Yahweh, a name so sacred that even today devout Jews will not speak or write it. Later, magnificent stone structures crowned this hill, each a glorious temple to the Israelites' god. Buttressed by soaring stone walls, Mount Moriah became known as the Temple Mount, the spiritual center of Jewish life. Every Jewish male was obliged to visit at least once a year. It was a journey that brought them close to their God, for the presence of Yahweh was believed to dwell in an inner chamber of the Temple it was known as the Holy of Holies. In 70 AD, as prophesied in the Old Testament, the temple was destroyed. In a bloody uprising, the Jews rebelled against their Roman rulers. The Romans devastated Jerusalem and banished the Jews from their homeland. The temple was reduced to rubble, leaving only a small section of wall. The last remaining fragment the Western Wall has come to symbolize the spiritual heart of Judaism. Often referred to as the Wailing Wall, Jews traditionally come here to mourn the Temple's destruction. Many pious Jews pray here daily. But the Western Wall is also a place of hope and joy. It is said that Judaism is a conversation between generations, a way to remember the past, but look toward the future. Jews from around the world bring their sons here for their passage into manhood, the Bar Mitzvah. As part of this ancient ritual, Boys recite from the Torah, the Hebrew scriptures. Religious history and tradition and the sacred presence of their God sustained the Jews through centuries of exile from Jerusalem. Today, the Western Wall represents the bedrock of Jewish faith. But for many Christians and Muslims, it's also a symbol of turbulence, as they too claim this city as a holy site. The great temple of the Jews had lain in ruin for 600 years when, legend says, the angel Gabriel awakened the prophet Muhammad and flew him on a miraculous horse across the desert. Following their night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, it's believed that Muhammad ascended the stairway of light to heaven, where he received from his God, Allah, the beliefs of Islam. By 691 AD, less than 70 years after Muhammad's death, Islam was fully entrenched in Jerusalem. To honor Allah, the Muslims built the glorious Dome of the Rock. The huge dome shimmers with 176 pounds of 24 karat gold leaf. And the words of the Muslim holy book, the Quran, gracefully adorn the tiled walls. Eight stairways lead to the holy mosque. The arches atop these stairways are called Mizan, which means scales in Arabic. Many Muslims believe that on the last day, the scales of judgment will suspend from these arches to weigh the hearts of the people against truth. 
The Golden Dome shelters a large stone sacred to both Islam and Judaism. It's believed to be the place from which Muhammad ascended to heaven, and the same rock where the Jewish patriarch Abraham nearly sacrificed his son. It is here that Judaism and Islam come face to face in spirit and conflict. The Dome of the Rock and the nearby Al-Aqsa Mosque stand on Mount Moriah, the site the Jews call Temple Mount. Muslims call it Haram al-Sharif, the Noble Sanctuary. To honor Allah, a Muslim man prepares himself for prayer. By taking a ritual bath, he cleanses not only his body, but also his spirit. Al-Aqsa Mosque is the largest mosque in Israel. It's built on the site Muhammad is said to have tied his horse before ascending to heaven. Marble columns, stained glass windows, and a mosaic of carpets dominate the interior. It's an oasis for the Muslim faithful. <laughs> A grand holy place where the spirit can soar. Haram al-Sharif is a world unto itself. But around this Muslim sanctuary swirls daily life and the passion of many faiths. Markets line the narrow streets of the old city, selling religious icons, Muslim prayer beads, carvings of the crucified Christ, through the Arab market, Christians trace the path they call Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrow. The route leads them along the same streets that Jesus took to his crucifixion. Twelve stations of the cross mark events in Christ's faithful journey. Here, Jesus meets the holy women of Jerusalem. A great crowd of people followed him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. At the end of the Via Dolorosa stands the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Built over the centuries, many Christians believe the church encloses the most spiritually charged sites of Christ's last days, his death burial, and resurrection. Inside this massive building, believers celebrate their faith. Pilgrims climb stairs to the top of the hill called Calvary, where they believe Christ was crucified nearly 2,000 years ago. Many crawl under the altar to touch the sacred spot where their Messiah's cross once stood. They pray at the smooth altar-like slab where tradition says Christ's body was washed before burial. And they celebrate Mass at the sepulchre itself, the tomb where his body was laid. Once a simple cave, the sepulchre was carved out of the original hillside and turned into a freestanding structure. Today, it's one of the most important Christian shrines in Israel. Candles glow constantly, each a symbol of a believer's prayer to God. To Christians, Jesus' triumph over death is the miracle of their faith. To Muslims, Muhammad's mystical journey to heaven united the Prophet with his God, Allah. Oh, God.
To Jews, the lasting fragment of their temple is a symbolic foundation for their religious life. These beliefs converge and sometimes collide in Jerusalem. Yet each has survived for centuries. Religious faith can generate powerful emotions. In Jerusalem, these emotions are felt by nearly everyone. For those who live here, the religious history and events of the city are simply part of daily life. And for many who visit the Holy Land, the journey will touch their souls forever. Remember your baptism and there are, however, documented cases of people who are overcome by the religious impact of Jerusalem. Some may believe they're actually King David, the Virgin Mary, even the Messiah. It's a condition so prevalent, it's been labeled the Jerusalem Syndrome. When Messiah will be here. The Muslim call to prayer and the resounding bells of a Christian church touch the ears of all faiths. Islam, Christianity, and Judaism are in many ways inseparable. To the east, Haram al-Sharif overlooks the Christian's Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed the night before he was crucified. And to the west, it looms above the ancient temple wall where Jews continue to worship today. Since biblical days, Jews have buried their dead on Mount of Olives in anticipation of the coming of the Messiah and the resurrection of the dead. Christians believe Jesus ascended into heaven after his crucifixion and will return here. And Muslims believe Allah's final judgment of humankind will occur on these holy grounds. Though his name in Islam is Allah, in Judaism, Yahweh, and in Christianity, God, there is but one day of final judgment, one heavenly paradise, and one Jerusalem, the holy city through which all must eventually pass. It will remain forever a living mosaic of faith.